the vector line integral of vector field f along oriented smooth curve c is the integral of f dot t ds and it's the limit of this sum so what we're going to take a look at here is we're going to see what this f dot t ds measures when i look at this curve here this is my curve c and that's what we see here. That's my curve C. And one thing you'll notice here is I have this tangent vector, and that's what this dot T is here that we see. That T is my tangent vector. And notice what tangent vectors do. We have this orientation of the curve going in this direction. And what that tangent vector does, it actually goes in the same direction as my curve at that particular point. So when I think of this integral, what I'm measuring is how much is these vector fields going in the same direction as my curve. And that's the idea of this tangent vector here. The tangent vector is in that direction. So in a sense, it's a measuring tool that's saying, oh, how many or how is the vector field affecting the curve and actually the direction I'm traveling on that curve? So that's the big idea of what we're dealing with here. So this f dot tds is simply saying that. So when I have these tangent vectors going out, how is that affecting my movement along that curve and in this particular direction? So as the vector field we see here, which is that's what the fpi is, is that helping me or hurting me as I travel along this path? helping me would mean going in the same direction, or is it going against me and, in a sense, slowing me down? So that's the big idea of what we're dealing with with this f dot tds. Now, we don't use this f dot tds as this limit here, as you probably already knew, but take a look at this. This vector line integral is equal to so this f dot tds is equal to f, when I plug in my rt and in, into the vector field variables, dotted with r prime t dt. That's how we actually use this. So the, the concept up here is fine, but we actually use it as this integral down below. So let's take a look at this example 83 here. It says evaluate the integral of f dot dr. Now notice this, I didn't say f dot dr, I said f dot t ds, but take a look below here, it says because of equation 6.9, and this one was 6.9 right here, we often use the notation, the integral of f dot dr for the line integral f dot t ds. So what I want you to see here, that the integral of f dot dr is equal to the integral of f dot t ds. So it's the same thing. Or I can say f r prime or f r t dotted r prime t ds or dt is the same thing also. So they're all equal. And that's what I wanted you to see here. Okay, so getting to the problem below, we're just going to use this formula here for my f dot t ds or for my f dot dr because that's what this says to do. It says if RT is equal to XT, YT, ZT, then DR denotes the vector X prime T, Y prime T, Z prime T. All right, and that's what it says above. So now if I take a look at this, it says evaluate F dot DR where my F is these three components here, and C is this these uh, components here. So I'm going to write these a different way. I'm just going to use my um, component, you know, component form here. So my f is going to equal x squared y. My y is going to equal x minus z. And I shouldn't say f. I shouldn't say x, y, and z anymore. I should say a lot of times I'll use p, q, r, just different letters for that now because these are all x's, y's, and z's here. 
and we're talking about vector fields. So there's my F. And my RT is T for the first, uh, T squared for the second, and for the third, it's going to be 2. There it is. And that goes from 0 to 1. We'll deal with that bound later when we set up the integral. So notice the first part of this formula here. And I mean here. All right. So we're going to have to do this F R T. So that means I'm going to plug in my T. Wherever I see X, I'm going to plug in T. Wherever I see Y, I'm going to plug in T squared. So that's the idea here. So we're going to talk about F R T. All right. So then for the first one, it's an X squared. So when I plug in a T, that's going to be T squared times Y. And my Y is T squared. So I'm just going to write times T squared comma, my x is t, so I'm going to write t, minus my z, which is 2, so minus 2, and then my x is t, times my y is t squared, times my z, which is 2, times 2. All right, and I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. Now, again, I want to put that all in there for the first one so you can get used to seeing that notation, and it's not scary to you at all. All right, so this is going to be a t minus 2 here, and then this is going to be 2t cubed. So there's our FRT, and that's this piece here. Now that we have that, we're set and ready to go. Almost. So next thing I'm going to do is find r prime t. And then it's going to be 1, 2t, two 0. So there's my r prime t. And there's my frt. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put that all together in my integral. So this is going to be the integral. And again, now we're talking about our bounds from 0 to 1. And keep that in mind here. I'm getting it down to a variable t, which makes it easier to integrate. One variable, mostly. So my f being t to the fourth, t minus 2, comma, 2t two cubed. And I'm going to dot that with 1, comma, 2t, two comma, 0. And this is why I like using this notation, because to me it makes it a lot easier when I'm doing dot product or most of my computation. And that's why I actually write it that way pretty much right away. Okay, so... This is going to be the integral from 0 to 1. And I'm just going to multiply this, these pieces and add them together. That's what dot product does. So it's going to be t to the fourth. And then when I multiply it by the second, remember it's a distributive property that 2t is going to have to be multiplied by the t and the 2. And that's going to be 2t squared plus 2t squared minus 4t. And then when I times the third one there, I'm going to get a 0, because 0 times 2t cubed is just 0. So that's what I end up with for my integral. So now I'm going to integrate. So that's going to be 1 fifth t to the fifth plus 2 thirds t to the third minus 2t squared, and that's going to be from 0 to 1. What I like about this, these are polynomials, and they all have t's for every term, which means when I do my lower bound, it's just going to be 0, so I don't really have to worry about it. So when I plug in a 1 here for all these t's, I'm going to get 1 fifth. Let me try to write a little bigger. 1 fifth plus 2 thirds minus 2. And then if I did the lower bound, it would be minus 0 for all of it. So I'm just going to put minus 0. So we get negative 17 fifths, 15, excuse me, for an answer. And that's our answer for this integral. But what does that tell us? That simply tells us here that the vector field is 
hurting us more than it's helping us as I travel along my path.